In this video, you're going to learn how to create a transparent PNG web image. Uh, we are going to use this for our logo, and the reason why I want a PNG is because PNG allows for high quality transparency. JPEGs can be good for photos, but they do not allow for JPEGs. So anytime I can't use a JPEG for a full graphic, I'm going to use a PNG. A lot of times the logo on a website can allow for the background to show through, and therefore we want to use a transparent PNG. I'm going to use Photoshop. There are other editing softwares that let you do transparent PNG. Uh, Photoshop is the one I know best, so that's what I'm going to show you. But another one in the Adobe suite that can help you is um, uh, Fireworks. Anyway, I'm going to create this from scratch. I'm going to come up here to File, New. I'm just going to create a new document. And the title of this is going to be called Philo Logo. And I'm going to go ahead and create it with lowercase and hyphens because that's what it's going to use for the file name eventually. The width, I'm going to choose 320 pixels and 80 pixels tall. I choose 320 because if we do responsive HTML, 320 is the width of a smartphone, some of the smallest ones. There are some that are smaller and go down to 240, um, but a lot of the newer smartphones, the width when they're held upright, there are 322 or 320 pixels. So if I design my logo, it'll sit at the top of the website and that'll be a good size. That's why I chose 320. We want this to be at 72 resolution. We want RGB color. And then for the background contents, by default, you may have white. You want to make sure that this is set to transparent. Color profile and everything else can be as is. So once you have that set, let's hit OK. And there's my blank document. Now this logo is going to be just all text, so I don't have any images. You can bring in images. Uh, if you actually have a logo that was created, maybe an illustrator, that's vector, you could open that logo in a vector program such as Illustrator. Select the logo that you want to copy. Make sure it's in the color format that you want. Copy that, and you could paste it right in here into Photoshop, and it'll be on its own layer. And it does require you know a little bit about Photoshop. Uh, I'm going to just create mine from scratch, just using text. So in this case, I put my text tool, and I'm just going to type Philo. And it's pretty small right now, so I'm going to go ahead and select all of the text. Jeez, I hope I don't have a spinning wheel too much during this exercise. And I can come up here and change the font properties up at the very top. So when I have all the text selected, things get a little bit better. So let's start off by choosing a color. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on this color wheel and I can put in, if I know what my hexadecimal color is, I can put it right in here. So I'm going to put FF9933. Should be sort of a goldy orange. There we go. And I hit OK. I can change the font type. Uh, right now it's I have Lato regular, but whatever font you have on your computer, you could pick something that works for you. All right. I'm going to choose Lato. Let's go with Lato heavy. I don't even know what that's going to do. And I'll need a larger font size. It's a little bit better. And I can start moving this around. Uh, I can use the transform tool, which is Command T, or Edit, tra Free Transform. When you do a Free Transform, it lets you change the size and the shape of your graphic. 
I'm going to go ahead and use the whole width. Now we'll create. A, I'm going to give myself a little bit of space at the top, if you can see that. And I'm going to have a little space below, because uh, I'm going to put some more words in there. But once I got that where I like it, I just hit return, and that commits it. And you can use the move tool to move it around if you need to. If you have the layer selected, you can also use arrow keys to move things up and down. So that's looking good right about there. I'm going to create another text layer. This time the text is going to be dark. I'm not going to go completely black. I'll go 222, 22. Two, two. Actually, I'm going to go with the text font. 1, 2, 3, all fours. So it'll be a dark gray. And hit OK. And I start typing a web comic. And actually, it did in there. There we go. A web comic. I, it looks like I edited the color of Philo and that's not what I wanted to do. So I'm, I'm going to come back and change that in just a bit. And you can style this however you like. Um, maybe just for a little bit of change instead of heavy. I'll use regular, so it's a little thinner of a font. And then let's go back and change that color. That was FF9933. All right, so there we go. And the, the little gray and white squares in Photoshop lets you know that the background is transparent. So that's not going to be part of the graphic. That's just... Uh, Photoshop's way of telling you you're working with a transparent. Now you can see over to the right, you should have a layers window. You should be able to see two different text layers. And if you don't have that, you can come up to window and choose layers. And from there you can see that you can edit those things. So if I have Philo selected, I can now keep editing that layer. If I select a webcomic, I can move that around and change things. Now I'm going to do one more thing to the Philo layer. And I'm going to come up here to uh, Layer and Layer Style, and I'm going to add a drop shadow. I'm going to do this for a couple of reasons. Um, it's just going to create a little dimension, but it also is going to show you how well PMGs hold the transparency against the background. And uh, let's see. I'm going to go. Most of these settings are just fine. I have my. This is set to drop shadow. If you click the little square preview, it shows you what it's going to do ahead of time. Now you kind of have to. My screen is a little small. It's kind of hard to see both at the same time. So if you have a larger computer, it's a little easier to do. Um, and if you look really closely, there is a drop shadow showing up behind these letters. All right, it's very it's subtle, and that's what we want. I don't want this to be ugly or drastic. Um, blend mode should be multiply, and we just hit OK. And if you don't want to add a drop shadow, you certainly don't have to. It's just going to add a little bit of dimension to our graphic. So this is our Photoshop file. I'm going to save this as a Photoshop file so I can edit it later. I don't know if you can hear my dog barking in the background, but that's my dog. Um, everything's okay. She's just getting a little crazy about something. Um, in the website folder, yeah, I could go ahead and save my PSD in this folder. Would I upload this to my server? Eventually, maybe, if I am sharing this website across other people or with other people, uh, they might be able to, they might want to be able to access these files. The only problem is, is so can the rest of the world. So it's up to you whether or not you want to include your PSD in your files. I'm not. I'm going to leave mine on the desktop and not use it. I would save it somewhere else. All right, now this is just an editable file. This isn't our final web file. I now need to make this a PNG. 
So let's go up here to File, Export, and we're going to use Save for Web. There's another video in this module that talks about saving images, and we're going to repeat a lot of these same things. Uh, now, right now, you'll see that it added a white background. And the reason why it did that is because our preset is at, on a JPEG. We don't want JPEG, so I'm going to change this to PNG 24. Now, in your reading, it says a PNG 32 maintains transparency. Um, Photoshop calls it PNG 24. I don't know why, but it's really a PNG 32. Uh, so we're going to maintain transparency with a PNG 24. And if you want to include interlace, and you can read about what those mean, um, interlace just means it's going to load a little in different, uh, a different format, but it adds file size. And we'll embed the color profile. That also adds file size. Uh, in this case, I, I, mm, I, I'll probably go ahead and choose the, the embed color profile just to make sure that the gold is the right gold. It does add some file size, but that's all right. Everything else is looking good. Metadata, I set to none, but if you know what these things are uh, from your Photoshop class, you certainly can set those. Let's go ahead and hit Save. And I'm going to save this to my Desktop Images folder. All right, so if I needed to find that and you'll see that it was on my desktop there's my project folder there's my images folder and I'm going to put it in there and it's called philo logo.png go ahead and hit save now that's how you would do it and then you could go to tinypng.com to optimize it I happen to have the plugin I'll show you how that works Photoshop export and I've got tiny PNG as a module it cost me 50 bucks uh, if you don't have that you can do it at their website for free and now I have to go and find where I'm going to save that and it's in my project folder oops I need to choose the images folder it's going to rename it the same name so it's going to write over it and that's okay. Just hit replace. Now it's a smaller PNG file and it's optimized for web. So that makes me feel a lot better. And that's really all there is to it. And when we bring this into our web page, it'll have whatever the background of the web page show up through where we have this. Now, if I put this on a dark background, that's going to cause a problem because I have the word a web comic in dark text. So if this is going to go on a dark background, I may want to inverse this. Uh, but for now, I'm going to keep it dark because when we put it on our, our current website in the project, you won't be able to read it. <laughs> so to be able to read it, I'm going to just keep it dark for now. And that's all there is to doing a transparent PNG.